Hello and welcome to Gav Tries to Build and today I'm trying to build a DC power coupler. So my friend Richard at church approached me and said uh, I've got a project for you. I've got this camera and I can't power it. And then a few nights later he turns up at the prayer meeting with uh, that little dongle you see there which has a USB mini jack at one end and a 3.5 millimeter barrel connector at the other. Now it feels like it might pull apart but it, it doesn't come apart easily so I'm a bit scared. And what he's saying is that he's kind of got the female, at the male end of what he wants to connect there um, on his power supply. So he needs to basically invert that. So I'm not 100% sure if I've understood him correctly, but what I, what I figured I'd do is build an inverter. So I ordered some parts, which are in the box on the right. And here I'm uh, marking up what goes where and I'm metering very carefully um, so I know what's what. And S and I are sleeve and inner uh, with the fat side down. So I'm making sure that whatever I do, it still works just the same at the end as it did in the beginning, just with a, a female socket presented rather than a male socket. So opening up the parcel I got from Sourcing Map, and inside I've got these barrel jacks. And my plan is to connect uh, positive to positive and negative to negative just to make you know an extending inverter. Now these are sold, uh, but because it's such a funky little size, I couldn't find one. I had a look on Amazon and eBay for about 25 minutes and, uh, well, I tried to look on Farnell. I can never find anything on there. You need a SKU to find anything on there. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I put them next to each other and then started doing a bit of metering and testing to make sure that it still works. Uh, that kind of connectivity setup. So then I got my helping hands and I tried to get the bits in, but they need to be very close together. So it took me a little while to fiddly fiddly before I figured, hey, what if I take both those both those grabbers off and put them on the same size? Can I then get both pieces next to each other before I start soldering? So there we go, measure twice, cut once as they say. It's lucky if I measure at all, you bodge everything. But uh, so there we go, got the two grabbers next to each other, two crop clips and get the components in place. And I'm trying to get the legs, long leg to long leg, short leg to short leg. It took me a little while of uh, testing to make sure there's continuity because it's hard to hold it all in position and get continuity. But once I was satisfied it was doing what I thought it was doing, uh, I was happy. My meter started playing out actually. It started turning itself on and off at random, which is a bit scary because I don't want to have to buy a new one. But uh, it's a bit of a complicated thing to fix for a numpty like me. But anyway, once I was satisfied here, uh, that the the sleeves are going to sleeves and the the little pole inside is going to little pole. Um, I put a dab of flux on for all the good that'll do, <laughs> and then thought about using the big fat solder, uh, but then I went for the the smaller solder because it's not that big a surface area. Uh, that big thick solder is useful sometimes, but um, I've got some really small stuff as well for micro soldering. Not that I'm any good at that, but yeah. So soldered those uh, those legs together. And I thought I was going to have to use a jumper wire between the two shorter legs, but actually the differential is not that big. But it has ended up slightly kinked as a, as a result. But whatever, I mean, I'd rather solder metal to metal here, really, just for solidness sake, because then you've got two things that are holding it in place. So there we go. Um, at this point, measure again. Make sure it's doing what you think it's doing. Yeah, the sleeves are happy. Inner, inner part's happy. Get the unused tools off the workbench and now I'm going to put some heat shrink around it so that it's you know made good. Uh, I knocked my camera flying at that point so <laughs> there's a cut there um, but I had some heat shrink going that was quite quite big quite big thick heat shrink that seemed to be about the right size so I thought right I'll cut a section of that get me scissors out. Uh, you got to cut it slightly longer than you think because what does heat shrink do? It shrinks and I wanted to make sure it was going around the whole the whole assembly. So whether this fixes Richard's problem or not, I don't quite know, because I don't fully understand what it is he's trying to accomplish. There's likely a better way. But what he was saying to me was um, it takes three volts, and most USB connectors are putting out five. So I think he wants to step... Uh, he's got some kind of power supply that's putting out three volts that he wants to somehow connect to a mini USB. I think that's what's going on. I didn't really get more than, like, 20 seconds to ask him the question so I thought I'll just build it and if it works it works and uh, hopefully it doesn't destroy his camera very sorry Richard if it does um, but I will ask him as well what the model of the camera is and maybe it's simpler to source a power supply I don't know and just checking that it's got the same continuity it had before so yeah all it's done is inverted the gender of the uh, connector so there you go there's the finished article on the right I've got a website remember those gavd.co.uk